Hello students, today we're going to talk about the Pythagorean theorem and its converse as well as midpoint and distance. That sounds like a lot, but I promise it's really easy to digest, just like good food. Is all good food easy to digest? No. Okay, I was confused. I, I was thinking, <laughs> never mind. All right, so it says if a triangle has one leg with a length of six and another leg with a length of eight, what is the length of the hypotenuse? Now we should edit this. It should be a right triangle. And that's really important. Right triangle. So, and then I'll put that there to show that that's a right triangle. Yes. So we have one leg of six and one leg of eight. Does it matter which leg I pick or can I just pick either one? It doesn't matter oh. because it would the, since we'd have an SAS triangle, uh, those two triangles would be identical. Got it. So, I have to do the Pythagorean theorem. And the yeah, Pythagorean and theorem is often taught as a squared plus yeah. b squared equals c squared, which makes some people uncomfortable because the letters really don't matter. We could write it as c squared plus b squared equals a squared, where c and b are the legs. Like, it doesn't matter at all. I like but, writing it with words. Right. Like, so leg, squared. Like leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, which is how I prefer also. I am we shocked. Have to recognize that in their past they've been taught a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we do leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Now everybody mm. knows that six squared is twelve. Just kidding. It's true. It's Thirty-six. It's Thirty-six. I'm just. just oh. Oof. And then eight squared is sixty-four. And then x squared. Sixty-four and thirty-six make a hundred. So that's what x squared is. To figure out what x is, we have to unsquare it, also known as square root. So x is 10. Okay, so looking at the second one, here we have a hypotenuse that's 20, a leg that's 16, and a leg that we don't know. Um, can we do the same thing where we have like leg squared plus another leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared? That makes sense. You can. I think I think a lot of us will mess this up because when you first see this, you'll write it as 16 squared plus 20 squared yeah. is the unknown squared because that's what you want to set up. You want the unknown to be by itself. But if you think of leg, leg, hypotenuse, it is less likely you will make that mistake. Right. And that, that's why we use those words often instead of the ABC thing. It's a little bit easier to not make that mistake. The second thing that I see a lot of students do is try to set this up in one step with subtraction instead of trying to set this up first and then subtract. Um, and I find that often that ends up causing some issues because we try to do too much at once instead of understanding what we're actually doing. Um, so squaring things, we've got 16 squared, which is 256 plus question mark squared is equal to 20 squared, which is 400. When we subtract 256, we end up getting 144. Ooh, and nice. if I unsquare this, we get the question mark is equal to 12. Cool. Beautiful. Quick little intro, Pythagorean theorem. Let's keep figuring out what we're doing. OK, uh, so now we're trying to find the midpoint of things. And I'm assuming that this is meant to be a number line. Yes. Instead of, two yeah, yeah, I just want to make sure instead of uh, some kind of measuring of distancey things, uh, because it's not always clear uh, in diagrams. Just so, now, so now that we know where this is, would it make sense maybe to start out to put some points in the middle of these two? Sure. Maybe not for the bottom one, but for the top one, I, I don't think that's a bad idea. So we've got like four and then five and then six and seven. Um, and I'm going to say we know midpoint means the point in the middle. So if we go one to the middle and then another to the middle, we end up at five. Oh, so five is the midpoint. Five is the midpoint. Got it. I bet there's a shorter way for us to do that. There is. Let's let's do the second one, that same idea, mm. and see if we can figure out a better way. So 22 to 35. So what if I go like a jump of five? So that'll be 27. Mm. And a jump of five, that'll be 30. And then 27, 28. 
29. Oh, so I have to go in between those. So that's 28 and a half. Yeah. We'll be in the middle. And that that's obviously sense. a very visual way of doing things, but there's got to be a better way. So if we consider the endpoints of Mr. Carlson's, we had a three and a seven, and that became a five. Well, how can I put three and seven together and get five? Well, when you said you put three and seven together, when I put them together, I get 10. Five is half of 10. Is that helpful? I think so. That makes sense. Uh, and if we think back to like the discussion of uh, measures of central tendency that we had in middle school, where you talked about mean, median, mode, and things like that, uh, one of the things we talked about was the number that's in the middle of two other numbers. And we called that in arithmetic an average. And in geometry, that's the midpoint. So midpoint is just the average. I think that makes sense. And that looks like the math that you did there. Okay. And does that work for the bottom one? So 22 plus 35, that's 57. Mm -hmm. And if I divide 57 by 2. I get 28 and a half. Oh, look ah. at us. We just figured something out. Beautiful. Ooh, so now we got two things happening at the same time. Uh, so we're trying to find the length of this segment and the midpoint of this segment. Um, I can only think of one, one really good way to find the length of something uh, if we have things. And that's using something we already talked about today, uh, which is the Pythagorean theorem. How does the Pythagorean theorem help you find length? Well, when I look at this, uh, this seems to like make this line that's below it stand out to me. And if I draw another uh, piece down, we end up with a right triangle. Oh. Where the hypotenuse is the length that we're trying to find. Oh. And this coordinate here is going to be based on the x that it's directly underneath, so 16, and the y that it's directly across from, 7. Whoa, that blew my mind. Could I think of that differently? Could I say, I want to figure out this distance, and I'm going from 4 to 16, from 4 to 16, mm -hmm. and that gets me 12, does that help me? It does, because that'd be the next thing that, okay. I, that I would do with this too. And then going oh, do vertically. Do I have to identify that point you just found, a 16, seven, or can I go right to that 12? You can go right to that 12. Uh, sometimes oh. it helps to be able to see the length. That, sometimes you can see that without that, that's either way is okay. Got it. Uh, and then going up, we're going from seven to 14, so that's gonna be seven. So that means the length is 19, right? Because 12 plus seven is 19 if we were adding things up, but we know better than that for right triangles. We know we oh. have to deal with something with like leg, leg hypotenuse. That's right, we did learn that. So we've got to do leg squared plus leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So 12 squared is 144, seven squared is 49, and then the hypotenuse squared. Um, that's 184, 193. 193. Is the hypotenuse squared. So I unsquared, I take the square root. So the hypotenuse is the square root of 193. That's true, because that is going to be around 14. Yeah, it does not come out with a uh, whole number value, which is okay. Can That's okay to leave it like that. Just leave it as the square root of 193. Is that okay? It is. Okay. Um, you, some students prefer to write this as a decimal. That's okay too. Um, but writing this as the square root of 193 is always an exact answer. All right, so now for the midpoint. Um, we did this when it was just kind of sitting flat. Um, so we're looking for the thing that's like half of this up this ramp, and that feels like that's a lot more work. Half, got of, the, half of the square root of 193. Oh, okay. Um, but I feel like that's going to be really hard to do. So I'm wondering if there's a better way based on seeing these coordinates to figure out the point that's exactly in the middle here. Well, could I think of it in two pieces? 
Oh, like you just drew where I find like the X piece first and then the Y piece. Hmm. And if we find the midpoints of each of those together, that makes the midpoint of the whole thing. Because for the point midpoint of the whole thing, you need an X and a Y. Right. Got it. So for the X, we're looking from four to 16. I'm going to write four plus 16 divided by two, which is going to be 10. And then for the Y, we're looking at 7 plus 14. 7 plus 14 divided by 2 is going to be, so that's 21, 10.5. And that's the answer. We're done with that? That's it. So that's the point. That's exactly in between those. It is. And if I found this distance here that I'm making blue, that would be the square root of 193 over 2? That would, although it might not look quite like that in the form that you find it, uh, just because we're not great at working with re reducing square roots at this point in our math. But you right. get the decimal equivalent if you want to do decimals. Yeah. Got it. All right. Oh, man. So now we got to decide if this triangle is scalene, isosceles, or equilateral. Um, those are not all mutually exclusive. Since we're here, let's find the midpoints of the sides. And I say they're not mutually exclusive because isosceles is two or more equal sides, and equilateral is all three being equal. That's true. So equilateral is a special type of isosceles. So scalene is none of the sides are the same. Mm -hmm. isosceles, is, isosceles is at least two, mm -hmm. and then equilateral is all three. I agree. So is it fair to say if we look at two of them, we'll be able to determine whether we're scalene or not? I just blew up his brain. No, it's not fair to say that yeah. at all. Okay. Let's talk uh, about but based, based on this picture and the fact that it's the scale, yes. Let's talk about A. It's true. We, we can kind of make a guess. Let's talk about AB. So you, you're saying I should make a triangle, right? So if I make a triangle for AB, I'm going to just call that AB. The vertical part looks like it goes from 1 to 4, so that's 3. And then the horizontal part goes from 0 to 4, so that's 4. All right. Don't worry, I am writing, but I think it's behind what Mr. Carr, there it is. And so then I can do the, the Pythagorean theorem, say leg squared plus leg squared is going to be the hypotenuse squared. So that's going to be 9 plus 16. So that's going to be 25 is the hypotenuse squared. So that means AB is 5. So I figured out that AB was 5. I'm going to argue that you don't even need to figure that out. Because that triangle is 3 and 4? And if these triangles don't have the same legs, in other words, they're not congruent, and here we got SAS going on again. Uh, then they can, their hypotenuse, hypotenuses yes, uh, would not be equal. I prefer uh, hypotenai, but I agree with you. So since yours was three by four and mine was three by four, A, B, and B, C are going to be the same. And then we're left with A, C. Which is seven. Yes. And one. Um, and I don't know that this doesn't add up to the same thing. So let's check what that is. So it would be one squared plus seven squared is equal to a C squared. Uh, that's going to be 50. So the square root of 50, which is not the same as five. So we're going to go with isosceles. Makes sense to me. Now we also need to find the midpoint. So I'm erasing all the stuff we just did. Mm. We want to find the midpoint of these things because I figured we're here. That's what we're practicing. So let's go ahead. Yep. So A is the point zero one. B is the point four four. So, so we're saying the mid. The midpoint is the average of that, right? Right. The well, the average of each of those. So if I do zero plus four, that's four divided by two is two. And then one plus four divided by two, I'll write as two and a half because I know that's how they're going to write it. So that's the midpoint of AB. All right. And then for BC, 
we know that B is at 4, 4, and C is at 7, 0. We already did a 0 and a 4, so that's going to be 2 again. Here we've got 4 plus 7 divided by 2, which is going to be 5.5. So that's the midpoint of BC. Now, if we're talking AC, A is at 0, 1. Be consistent, Mr. Budworth. A is at zero one and C is at seven zero. Oh, see these addition problems are easy. Zero plus seven is seven divided by two. And then one plus zero is one divided by two. I wrote fractions that time, made me happier. So we found all three midpoints. In fact, that was way faster than the first part of the problem, finding the midpoints. So you're saying midpoints might be an easier calculation than lengths? I think so. All right, so we got legs where we've got 10 and 24. And what's the hypotenuse? So I can draw this, right? I believe in you. That's lovely. You just blew up their brains by drawing it that way. I did. You're... That's why I drew it that way. It's fun. Uh, so 10 and 24. Um, and we got to find the hypotenuse. We know how to do that. So that's 10 squared plus 24 squared is equal to hypotenuse squared, that's 100, and that's 576. No. Nope. 25, yeah, it's 576. So I, I thought I, you were right, so I, I nodded. I thought I was going crazy for a second there. Uh, so we've got 676 is equal to the hypotenuse squared. The square root of that uh, is going to be 26. Beautiful. Which I totally did as a square root and not knowing the reduced form of this. You, yeah, you, you, you cheated. Um, so in the corner I, I put, is this an example of a Pythagorean triple? Because that was a vocab term that, that showed up. So a Pythagorean triple is just three integers that work in the Pythagorean theorem, essentially. Uh, is that fair, Mr. Carlson? Yep, that's exactly so fair. We've got 10, 24, and 26. Those are all integers. And when I say integers, I mean things that have nice square roots. And so, yes, this is an example of a Pythagorean triple. In fact, we've seen a number of them so far in this video. If you go back in the video, you can find, I don't know, three or four others. Three, four, five is, is a common one. Um, you'll see that on various standardized tests. Six, eight, the, 10, it's the same thing. I think these are the two that we saw previous. Could be, I, I don't know. Ooh, find the value of X. This looks like one of the ones that's a little bit trickier. That's uh, why I picked it. Yeah, but if we're writing this as leg squared plus leg squared is equal to hypotenuse squared, I think that's a little bit easier. So like X is one of the legs and eight is one of the legs. And yeah, and I, is 20. I also want to just kind of remind ourselves that uh, we do need to make sure we can actually use the Pythagorean theorem before we use it. Um, I know that this is a right triangle, so that gives me permission to use the Pythagorean theorem. Without that permission, we cannot use it. That's a good point. I would also suggest your first thing you do is identify what the hypotenuse is. It's opposite mm. the right angle if you are confused. If you were in my class, I'd make class, not close. I'd make a really loud noise like Boo! to um, mm. fire that ray out from the right angle. The kids really love it. But um, if you fire that ray out from the right angle, that's your um, hypotenuse. You want to be able to identify the hypotenuse because it's not only useful in the Pythagorean theorem, but where we're headed, we're going to need to identify that. True. All right, so we've got x squared plus 64 is equal to 400. And that gives me x squared is equal to 336, which I do not think is a perfect square. I do not think so. 324 is, but not. Yeah. So this is an example of not a Pythagorean triple. You can leave this as the square root of 336. There's also something called simplifying radicals that we could talk about, but we're not going to right now, uh, but that you could do. Maybe we'll make an extra small video if people are interested in that. 
We could do that. You're going to like the next one. Oh, it's a puppy. That's why I kept this one because it amused me because there was a puppy. So apparently um, this dog is walking up that seesaw and walking to the other side and then it will go down and then the dog can keep moving. I think, I think that's how that thing works. And we want to know how far the dog's paws are when it's parallel to the ground. Yes. So assuming this is going to be the top of that board. Yes. Uh, so this is the thing that we don't know. And there's my hypotenuse. Right. This is also a right angle. So we could use Pythagorean theorem for this and say x squared plus 26 squared is equal to 36 squared. Uh, you chose some nice ones for us. So this was 676? Yes. And then 36 is going to be 900, 1296. 1296. That's way faster than me doing that in my head. Uh, when I subtract those two, is this why you let me do this one? It's 620. We end up with 620, which is also not a perfect square. Right. So we can leave it as the square root of 620. If you wanted to, you could approximate that with a decimal, but you don't have to. What did you just do the decimal? I did not. I had kind of assumed that you did, but never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay. I would have had to unlock my phone and I hadn't done that. So if you're confused about that, if you have an iPhone, you have to unlock your phone and rotate it and then you can see this. It's true. All right. So now we have uh, some kind of unknown triangle with side lengths. Okay. There's my triangle. Um, we've got 85. 84 and 13. I knew you were going to do that to you the worst. <laughs> um, and trying to figure this out relies on one really important idea. Uh, if we have a triangle and it happens to be a right triangle, the hypotenuse has to be the longest side. So if we're trying to figure out if this is a right triangle, by the way, this is called the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, what we have to do is see if the Pythagorean theorem works. So in other words, we have to decide if leg squared plus leg squared does equal hypotenuse. So in this case, 13 squared plus 84 squared may or may not equal 85 squared. Uh, and this is definitely a calculator problem. Is your uh, phone in calculator mode? I'm ready. So 13 squared I know is 169. 84 squared is 7,056. Cool. And then 85 squared is 7,225. Cool. Can't draw that five there. I'll try again. There we go. I had to draw it from the bottom. So do you think it'll work? What do you think? Uh, I think it might, because when I add these two together, uh, I get 7,156. That means 7,216. And that gives me 7,225 <gasps> is equal to 7,225. So we have the right triangle. That means that that is our right angle. <laughs> Not to scale, friends. Not to scale. <laughs> oh, and here is kind of how to decide if things are right, uh, right triangles or uh, obtuse or acute triangles. Um, I like to think about this as the T-Rex theorem. Ooh. Uh, or one of the T-Rex theorems. Because if my um, triangle is a right triangle. My T-Rex arms fit really nicely at a right angle. And if the hypotenuse-ish side is bigger, it forces my arms apart and makes that right angle bigger. And if the hypotenuse-ish side is smaller, it forces them together and makes that right angle less than a right angle. Um, so I like that you can kind of reason through this. I never remember which one of these is which. By memory, I always have to figure it out every time that I do that, and that's okay. I always go with the one triangle I know is acute, which is an equilateral triangle. Mm. So like three, three, and three. And then I tell myself, okay, three squared and three squared plus three squared. Well, that's a less than. So that reminds me that that has to be acute. So that if the hypotenuse thing is smaller, it's acute. Yes.
Because I agree. I can't remember. I always remember which no. way things go. <laughs> no, I, I always have to think about it and figure it out. Uh, and that's totally fine. And then we're deciding whether or not these fit those patterns. So um, is it fair to say we have to set this up for each one? And then we have to determine what to put in between them. Why am I circling those numbers? Those are the big ones. Those are the, the potential hypotenai. Mm. OK. Um, and there are a couple here that, because I know some stuff, uh, might make this a little bit easier. So for example, I know that there's such a thing as a 6, 8, 10 right triangle. And that two of these have a six and an eight. So if that were a 10, we'd have a right triangle. But that's, since that, that's an 11, what does that mean? Since that's bigger than 10, this is going to be obtuse. And we could also figure that out by saying 121 and then 64 mm -hmm. and 36 and saying that that's hundo. bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And same thing here, 144 is bigger than a hundo. So. Oh, that would be obtuse as well. Uh, oh, and actually, we can do that for this one too, because we have a six, eight, ten, but we have six and the nine, ten instead. That means that the two leggy pieces are should be bigger. Let's see if that works. So you're saying a hundred is less than eighty-one and thirty-six? Yeah, and it is beautiful. So that and would make. You, I mean. This works, your your argument that you created for that first one works for all of the ones on this page, actually. <laughs> uh, but this one, you have 100 and then 49 and 64 and 100 is less than, so that one is acute. It's funny that this random worksheet that I generated all worked out to basically be the exact same problem with slightly different numbers. Yeah, um, and that gets us to this last kind of sticky note about whether or not we can always make a triangle. Uh, this is the other half of what I consider the T-Rex triangle theorem, uh, where if we have uh, the lengths of a triangle and we don't have enough hypotenuse to get there, we can't connect them. Uh, and by hypotenuse, I mean longest side to get there. Um, so the way that this works out is you need the two shorter lengths together to be larger than your longer length. Um, so like three and four, your third side would have to be less than seven. But we may or may not talk about that in a separate uh, triangle inequality day. I don't know. We're not going to talk about that. I just wanted to have that quick chat. And that's yep. it. Okie doke. That's it, friends. I hope that you enjoyed this delightful uh, discussion of these things.